Hello and welcome. I am Robin Gamble from UK Helix. We are screw pile designers, suppliers, installers, and we also hire and sell screw pile installation equipment. Now, if you're planning a construction project and you want solid foundations, you may have come across ground screws and screw piles. You may even think that they're the same product, that they behave the same way, that they do the same job, but I can assure you they are quite different. They have different applications and different ways in which they should be used. So today I'm going to talk to you about the differences between ground screws and screw piles so you can make an informed decision about what best suits your project. So let's talk about the ground screws. They are a shallow fixing designed for lightweight structures. Often you'll see them used in a, in a DIY capacity, though there's plenty of stores today that are very experienced in installing them. These are suitable for things like fences, decking, and lightweight structures. So think about timber frame, sips, buildings, light gauge steel structures. Okay, let's talk about screw piles. These are actually a structural element uh, designed for much higher loads than ground screws. So with screw piles, you can think about housing extensions, new builds, warehouses, civil engineering, substations, much higher loads, bigger buildings, Let's talk about load capacity. As far as I'm aware, ground screws, you're talking about 500 kgs a tonne, perhaps two tonnes. To the best of my knowledge, they don't go much higher than two tonnes, but I'm open to correction. So if any ground screw, screw experts know that uh, ground screws can take much higher loads, please leave a comment. Now it's worth also talking about how a ground screw takes its load. So a ground screw acts very much like a wood screw, but it's, it's based on friction. So installing this will cause displacement in the medium, and this thread will also uh, develop friction, and that is how they take their load. So it's a friction-based product. Now in terms of ground conditions, I believe they behave well in clay. I think stiff clay may be challenging for them, certainly ground with a lot of obstruction. So with ground screws, I believe you need favorable ground conditions. Now with screw piles, the loads are much higher. Uh, think 10 tons, 20 tons, 30 tons, even above that. Now screw piles behave differently to ground screws. Whereas ground screws work on friction, primarily, screw piles work on an end bearing plate. Obviously there will be some friction involved with the installation and, and saw displacement, but primarily the actual load will be taken by this end bearing plate, which allows them to take a far higher load than a ground screw. So to summarize, ground screw, friction based product where you need favorable ground conditions, a screw pile end bearing plate, which allows them to take far higher loads. In addition, we normally get phone calls at UK Helix when someone has a specific engineering challenge. So that might be a tree protection order where there could be potential root activity interfering with the foundation. They may have been told to go exceptionally deep with their foundations by building control uh, because of made ground. And so it's normally challenges where we get a phone call for the use of screw piles. Let's talk about installation and testing. Ground screws, I typically see them being installed by hand, which means that the installation is quite lightweight and the installation is typically quite quick as well because they're operating at shallow depths. Um, I have seen more installers recently using excavators and drive units, which is what traditionally we use in screw piling. I think that speeds up their installation. Now, in terms of load capacity in testing, to the best of my knowledge, there is no torque related formula which allows you to know the capacity of a ground screw. So what that means is, if you wish to know the capacity of your ground screw in your conditions, you will need to perform a test on them. That could be an axial or a tension test, uh, which literally means uh, 
a push test or a pull test. And so you'll often find uh, when ground screws are involved in a project, there may be an initial test of the ground to see if, if they're suitable. What that does mean is that if you're not doing a pull or push test on every ground screw, you don't for certain know the capacity of every ground screw that you're installing. Now, I have seen ground screw companies recently say that they are monitoring the torque on their installation. I don't know what that means in terms of a torque to load capacity formula. Maybe there is a formula that I don't know about and I'm more than open to, to correction and persuasion, but as far as I know, monitoring the torque doesn't give you actual data on their load capacity. With screw piles and their installation, we're typically using a torque head attached to an excavator. And we will be monitoring the torque as these screw piles are being installed. And what that does is it allows us to do a conversion and know the, the load capacity of these screw piles. So effectively, every screw pile that's being in installed is a test pile in a way, and we know their load capacity. If you're doing it correctly, there isn't any guesswork with screw pile installation, you should know the ultimate load capacity of every screw pile that you've, that you've installed. A little bit of a difference there in terms of testing and knowing the ultimate load capacities. Again, if it's a lightweight structure, it really might not be a concern to you with ground screws. Right, let's talk about regulation and compliance regarding ground screws and screw piles. Screw piles can be certified tested and documented for building control, including ISO 9001 and EN 1090 standards. Their material traceability and engineering data make them suitable for regulated works. This is the case with screw piles fabricated in the UK and ourselves at UK Helix, where our products are fabricated in Finland using construction grade traceable steel. Ground screws, often imported and sold at high volumes, usually lack such documentation and may be unsuitable where compliance or certification is needed. However, for permitted development, exempt buildings or garden rooms, for example, this may not be an issue. OK, let's talk about frost, heave and root activity. We often get called at UK Helix because of things like uh, variable ground conditions, uh, heave, expansion and contraction of the, of the ground conditions. So why that favours screw piles is that the end bearing plate will be installed way below where that activity takes place. So you can imagine the helix is what is taking the load and all the movement around here can basically take place. The load get bearing capacity is not going to be affected. So oftentimes we're called uh, for tree protection orders where the root activity will be taking place in say uh, the first meter to two meters. As long as the helix is buried below that root activity, screw piles are a very good solution for, for tree protection. Uh, the same goes for frost heave. So again, the frost heave is typically taking place around a meter uh, it may take place further down as long as the end bearing plate is buried beneath, beneath where that activity takes place screw piles are a very good solution so good solution to heave susceptible soils good solution to frost heave and a very good solution for root activity where the end bearing plate is buried below where that activity happens now when it comes to heave frost heave and root activity, I think you have more challenges with ground screws. They're installed to a shallower depth, typically, and this thread, which is normally quite close to where the activity is happening, or maybe even directly in the area where the activity is happening, can be susceptible, in my opinion. So if you think this is um, a friction-based product, um, its load bearing capacity is happening around here and if it's at a shallow depth, a metre to, to two metres is where the uh, potentially tree root activity is happening and that is how the load is being, uh, you know, being taken, I feel that that is potentially susceptible to, to heave. Similarly with frost, if it's installed at a shallow depth and it's taking a load with friction, 
and the activity is happening around here, potentially there's the, there's the possibility for, for that to move. Um, again, that's my opinion. Um, if you think differently, I'm open to correction, so please leave a comment in the comment section. Okay, let's talk about manufacturing, materials, and quality control. Ground screws are mass-produced, mostly in China, typically using thinner, non-structural steel. These are often optimized for cost and shipping efficiency, but often lack traceable steel grades or engineering certification. Again, if you're doing a garden room or a permitted build, this might not be an issue at all, but it's worth bearing in mind. Screw piles are typically made in the country of origin or nearby. In our example, with UK Helix, ours are fabricated in Finland. Using certified structural steel under regulated manufacturing practices. While mass-produced screw piles are appearing more often in the UK and Europe, it's critical to check that the steel is certified and traceable, especially if structural performance is important. Let's talk about cost considerations. Ground screws, cheap, fast to install, and probably cost effective for non-critical structures. So cost of screw piles, definitely higher initial cost. With that higher initial cost comes uh, guaranteed and traceable materials, increased load capacity, increased strength, So, final word on screw piles and ground screws. If your project is on a very tight budget, um, if it's lightweight, if you've got suitable ground conditions and is not subject to things like building control, ground screws might be a good solution for you. If your project is potentially susceptible to heave or tree protection orders and root activity, if it's a heavy structure, if it's a structure that will house lots of people um, or heavy activities, if it's subject to building compliance like building control, I would opt for screw piles. Again, this has been Robin Gamble from UK Helix. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative and I hope it allows you to make an informed decision about whether ground screws or screw piles are suitable for you. If you need any information on screw piles, please don't hesitate. Get in contact with us uh, through our website or through LinkedIn. We're on Instagram, YouTube, etc. We would love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching.